हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स सॉइल एंड वाटर कॉन्जर्वेशन एंड वाटर शेड मैनेजमेंट माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर आदित्य खेबुड़कर आई एम वर्किंग इन के आई टीज कॉलेज ऑफ कोल्हापुर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग एज असोसिएट प्रोफेसर दिस कोर्स इज डिवाइडेड इन सिक्स डिफरेंट यूनिट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू बिगिन विथ फर्स्ट यूनिट that is introduction and basic concepts related to this course as far as the first unit is considered we are going to cover three topics in the first unit the first topic is introduction to watershed management second will be stakeholders and their relative importance and the last topic in first unit is watershed management policies and decision making today we will begin with the first topic of unit 1 that is introduction to watershed management and in this particular topic we will be covering concept of watershed watershed characteristics watershed approach and different principles of watershed so let's start with today's session now what is watershed as far as this course is considered we are going to deal with different resources which are comprised in a particular boundary which we will going to discuss deeply how they get affected by various activities or naturally but whatever the resources we are going to consider that will be considered within a defined boundary and that particular defined boundary is nothing but a watershed now watershed when we talk about watershed we first have to understand the concept of hydrosphere and hydrological cycle in within a watershed there are different resources such as land vegetation minerals and most important water so water exists within a watershed in different uh, again water exists in a watershed in ponds within a watershed water exists in different forms first of all let's see what is hydrosphere hydrosphere is basically refers to the total amount of water which is available on earth it may be in the forms of ocean river lakes even ground water and water which is available in atmosphere so it is the mass of water found on below and above the surface of planet now this particular hydrosphere plays a very crucial role as far as the balance of various lives on earth and the water cycle which involves the movement of water between the atmosphere land and oceans is a key component for hydrosphere and also for maintaining the uh, earth's overall balance now if you see this first figure you will find different forms of water in hydrosphere the water which is on a land surface that is in the form of river also the water is in the oceans 
so we generally call it as a surface water then the water which is below the surface that is we call it as a ground water and the water which is above the surface that is the water which is present in the atmosphere it may be in the form of clouds or in the form of water vapors now what is hydrological cycle hydrological cycle is nothing but the change of phase of water within the hydrosphere now if you see this second figure which represents the water cycle generally we know uh, how this water changes from one phase to another phase within the hydrosphere so whatever the water available in the water bodies like in ocean or in lakes it gets evapor evaporated and after evaporation the condensation takes place similarly whatever the vegetation cover available on the land surface it uh, uh, the, that vegetation transports the water in the atmosphere through transmission we call it as evapotranspiration so after evaporation whatever the water which is stored or get collected in the atmosphere get condensed and it returns back on surface through precipitation after pre precipitation the water once it is reached on surface it travels from different streams through the form of runoff and it gets collected as a surface water and flows through rivers or also it gets stored in the lakes some of the water which is fallen through uh, through precipitation will uh, when we uh, will go into the ground water through infiltration process so this is how the process continues and some of the water from ground water again reaches into the river as well as into the uh, into the oceans and again the evaporation takes place so this cycle continues which we call as a hydrological cycle so both these aspects of hydrosphere as well as hydrological cycle are very essential uh, as far as the watershed is considered now let's see the concept of watershed <clears throat> first we will see the definition of watershed watershed is nothing but a geographical area it is a geographical unit in which the hydrological cycle and its components uh, can be analyzed usually watershed is defined as the area that appears on the basis of topography and to contribute all the water that passes through a given cross section of a stream if you observe this particular figure you will find this is general representation of a watershed this particular area is defined is bounded by a certain boundary which is denoted as a watershed boundary it is also called as divide so this particular dotted line is also called as divide line so watershed is generally comprised of a boundary and that boundary is nothing but a ridge line so depending on the topography we can have different watersheds and within the watershed we will have different resources like land vegetation different streams rivers ponds even the whatever the uh, human settlements that can also be part of watershed now in this particular figure you will find 
there are different streamlines which are flowing depending on the topography and slope of a particular area. So, these different streamlines gets connected and they form a river. So, in this particular river, at this particular point, there is an outlet of this watershed. So, it is a confined area defined by the watershed boundary or divide lines and the entire area is called as a drainage area which represents our entire watershed. 